Welcome back to Beyond the Lens Productions, your source for all things automotive. I hope everyone is enjoying the Pontiac Grand Prix series as we continue down the road to 1991. I want to also thank all of my subscribers and viewers for your feedback, for your likes, your comments on some of my previous videos. As we move into 1991, the Pontiac Grand Prix returned with the same W body platform as before. It was by no means a carryover year though. A host of mechanical and visual changes were implemented to improve performance and visual appeal. Now to me, I think the mechanical changes were really the big story this year, but we will not forget some of the visual ones as well. Uh, perhaps the most significant change for 1991 was the retiring of the Pontiac Grand Prix Turbo and its McLaren developed pushrod V6 in favor of a new Grand Prix GTP. The advent of new EPA cold start emissions regulations prompted General Motors to abandon the use of turbochargers. As the turbos took up heat energy in order to operate, they caused the catalytic converters to take additional time to reach operating temperature, rendering them ineffective for a slightly longer period of time than they otherwise would be. That and negative, the negative reputation of turbochargers for durability that they had earned during this period. Um, I mean, I can even think back to when I was a kid and knowing people that had cars that had turbochargers and it always, always seemed like they're always blowing their turbos or something along those lines, even though most of the time it was caused by uh, poor maintenance on the part of the owner. Nevertheless, the turbos did gain a poor reputation for that, so uh, it sent GM looking for other ways to make horsepower. The result was a new 3.4 liter twin dual cam V6, which debuted in 1991 in the Pontiac Grand Prix GTP trim level, which was an option package on the GT at the time. It wasn't actually its own... Um, trim level as it would become later on in the decade. It was assigned the code B4U and was the top performance model of the lineup. Though the GTP used as uh, much of the Grand Prix Turbo's body cladding and hot handling suspension, it featured a new nose quad mini headlights that um, kind of brought back the uh, Batman treatment that uh, was on the 1977 and 78 Firebirds. It was a powertrain that really, really separated the GTP from its predecessors, and the twin dual cam represented a significant evolution from the previous engine. In an effort to keep the development costs in line, the dual uh, cam represents essentially was a double overhead cam conversion for the existing GM 60 degree V6 that had been in service since the 1980 model year. Though the twin dual cam V6 bore no visual similarity to its predecessors, it was in fact based on a very familiar architecture. A new block was designed to facilitate the conversion Though it was not directly interchangeable with the earlier 3.1 liter V6, they were quite similar in appearance. It was beefed up and reinforced uh, with uh, head bolts, bosses uh, for improved anchoring and less distortion. A 4 millimeter increase in bore size to 92 millimeters brought the total displacement to 3.4 liters or 207 cubic inches. The crankshaft was the same unit used in the 3.1 liter turbo V6. The cylinder heads were the big difference separating the new engine from its predecessors. And even today, they are very modern by today's standards and quite efficient. The cam carrier was actually a separate assembly from the cylinder head itself and the cams rotated directly on the carriers without bearing inserts. The valve sizes for the twin dual cam measured 1.44 inches for the intakes and 1.26 for the exhaust. 
they were actuated directly on the valves through hydraulic bucket tappets. Cam followers were not used in this design. The valves operate in a pent roof combustion chamber with a centrally located spark plug. The chamber design was very efficient, allowing for regular 87 octane lead of fuel to be used, even with its rather high compression ratio. The induction system was electronic, individual port fuel injection system typical of the type used on GM performance cars of the era. It was optimized to enhance low speed performance, which often suffered in four valve per cylinder engines without adversely affecting top end power. A crank trigger ignition system was used with a trio of ignition coils assigned to service a pair of cylinders each. The twin dual cam V6 was available with either a GM get rag 5 speed manual transmission or an electronically controlled 4 speed automatic. With the 5 speed, the engine was rated at 210 horsepower and 215 foot pound of torque. With an automatic equipped vehicle, it was rated slightly lower at 200 horsepower. But perhaps the biggest news about the Pontiac Grand Prix GTP was that even though the engine was more exotic and powerful than the 3.1 liter turbo, the base price dropped from $25,600 to under $21,000. The reason was that the car didn't have to go on to an outside supplier to be finished. The entire operation could be handled in-house. Production for 1991 totaled 101,211 units. Breaking that down was 36,173 LEs, 56,089 SEs, 3,799 GTs, and 5,150 STEs. GTP production was included in the GT model totals. As you can see, 1991 was an exciting year for the Grand Prix. And although it was not a uh, redesign year, it was certainly not a carryover year either. Uh, there were lots of exciting changes that happened, and uh, 1992 will be much of the same. There should be some exciting changes, so uh, join me in the next video for that. And before you leave, be sure to uh, like the video, leave me a comment below, and subscribe to the channel so that you will know when the next video in this series and any other series as I do in the future will be uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. If I have used a picture of your Grand Prix in any one of my videos, please don't hesitate to let me know so I can give you credit for it. And I would love to hear from you and hear uh, if there's any, inf any other information about your car that I could include in a supplementary video. Anyhow, thank you for watching and have a great day.